Now that I have drawn the reference planes to create the skeleton for the primary shape of my dining table, I now want to be able to have the ability to adjust the distance between these reference planes to a specific value and create multiple versions of these values to suit the size of dining table that I wish to use in my project. So in order to do that, I need to create parameters. To create a parameter, I need to add dimensions between the reference planes that I wish to use for a specific parameter. So in the modify tab, in the measure panel, I will click on the drop down and select aligned dimension. I'll first select between the two outer vertical reference planes and place a dimension. As said in the, a previous video, I want the dining table to adjust equally along this center vertical reference plane. Therefore, in order to do that and ensure that is set in the family, if I select the three reference planes and create a new dimension, place this dimension and then select the EQ toggle. I can now see that an EQ has appeared in both of these dimension segments. And if I cancel and select one of these reference planes with the move toggle highlighted, if I click and hold my mouse button and drag the location of this right hand reference plane, you can see that the left hand reference plane adjusts as well. So I now know that this is equalized around the center reference plane. I'll now do the same thing for the depth. Create my equalized dimension and then another dimension which we will use to specify the depth. In order to now create a parameter, I will select the dimension and in the ribbon under the label dimension, I can either select this drop down to select a previously created parameter if applicable, or I can select this new create parameter button and this will open the parameter properties. I can either create the parameter as a family parameter, so it cannot appear in schedules or tags in the project, or I can select a shared parameter from an external shared parameter file. For the purposes of this video, I will select family parameter, I can then give it a name. I will give this a name width. I then need to choose whether I want it to be a type or an instance parameter. So a type parameter being a parameter which will be associated to all instances of that type and an instance parameter being a parameter that I can adjust on an individual basis for each element. Because I want the width to be standardized, I will select type. The discipline and the type of parameter are fixed because it is a dimension, therefore it has to be a length parameter. And if I wanted to, I could select this drop down and choose an alternative group for the parameter. I can also add a tooltip to help describe the use of this parameter to anyone else in the project. 
So I will simply write here width of dining table. Select OK. And once I am happy with all of these settings, I can click OK. And I can now see that this dimension, the value has been prefixed with the parameter name width. So this enables me to easily identify in this plan view which dimensions have parameters associated to them. I can now click the dimension and because it has turned blue that means it is editable so I can select inside the value and I could change this to a different value like so. I'll now do the same to the depth parameter. Note that in the drop down I now have the width parameter available if I wish to have it as the same parameter but I will create a new parameter, call this parameter depth, edit the tooltip, and click OK. Again, I will change this value in what the term is called flexing. So we flex the family to make sure that it behaves as we expect. I will also go into my front elevation. So the elevation looking from directly below. And I will create two more dimensions. In elevation, I tend to not associate the dimension to the level, but press tab and select the reference plane instead. And I'll do the same for the tabletop thickness. I can now select this parameter or dimension, create a parameter, call it height, And then I will create a new parameter for the tabletop thickness. Note that it's good practice to name your parameters consistently. So for example, I'm using Pascal case to name all my parameters. Note that in this view, I have two reference planes and two dimensions or parameters that will drive this geometry. It's important to understand that it's all about the hierarchy of reference planes that decides which parameter impacts which other parameters and reference planes. For example, if I change the height to 750. Note that the tabletop thickness value stays the same and the lower of the tabletop thickness or tabletop bottom reference plane moves down with the height. That is because this reference plane is fixed and locked to the level, therefore this reference plane cannot move, therefore all the other reference planes move in relation to this reference plane. So that's very important to understand when developing and setting up the reference planes and parameters. I'll go back to my floor plan. As well as being able to access the parameters from the views. I can also go to the ribbon and select the family types 
to open the Family Types dialog box. Here I can see all the parameters that I've created and I can adjust them within this dialog box. So I could change the width to 1500 and if I click apply I can see how the width changes in the view. I could do the same for the depth. Click apply and the depth parameter changes as well. So these are the two primary ways in which to edit parameters. I also have the Revit built-in parameters available under identity data. To edit a parameter, I can simply select a parameter, select the pencil or edit parameter in the bottom left, which brings up the parameter properties that we saw when creating the parameter. I can also create a new parameter directly from within here. I can delete a parameter, move a parameter up or down within the group, and I can also sort all the parameters in ascending or descending order for ease of management and when creating the family. Click OK to close. So that is the basics of creating dimensions and then creating parameters in order to drive and define the geometry. In the next video, we'll finally start adding some geometry to start creating our dining table.